videos that feature cameras that are desired by a lot of people. Film cameras like the Leica M6 or the Hasselblad X-Pen and also similarly popular digital cameras like my Leica Q for instance. However, there's one camera that I've been using for years but never even mentioned it in one of my videos. Or at least not that I'm aware of, but hey, feel free to prove me wrong. I could tell you now that it's this Fuji here, but no, it's not. It's not the camera I'm going to talk about. However, there will be a video coming where I talk more about this Fuji um, and why I got it. The camera I actually want to talk about is one that most of you own and carry around on a daily basis. And you might have guessed by now, it's the good old smartphone. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to share with you some thoughts about why it might be a good idea to use your smartphone for street photography. And also I'm going to show you how I process my smartphone street shots on my phone shortly after taking them. Like a lot of you, I really enjoy shooting nice cameras that are a lot of fun to use. However, occasionally it happens that I don't have a camera with me or I'm shooting film and my camera is loaded with some black and white film and suddenly I stumble across a scene that looks way better in color. This for instance, a photo I took in St. Petersburg in Russia. I saw this woman taking a nap on a blanket and in the background you can see some military vehicles and an intercontinental missile. That looked kind of odd and I took a shot with my M6 that had some black and white film loaded, unfortunately. Well, I thought color might be way better so I went a little closer and took another shot using my phone. In the end, I liked the phone shot a lot more so I'm glad I took it. In the beginning, I neglected my phone as a tool for street photography. Not sure why, but for me as a photographer, a smartphone camera was rather a toy and not so much a tool that can produce some great images. I was totally wrong because when it comes to street photography, the least important factor is image quality. I've seen so many great photos that were blurry or super grainy, but still they look great because the subject and the story stood out and that is in the end what matters most. For instance, this photo here that I took when I was on my way home from a convenience store and I didn't bring any camera except my smartphone. It was a hilarious scene, but the couple making out is blurry, but do I really care? No, not at all. In fact, it might even add to the story. In the end, you don't need to worry about inferior image quality when using a phone for shooting street because it doesn't matter that much and phone cameras have come a long way and nowadays they can deliver some amazing results. Also when you use the smartphone, people aren't bothered too much because it's so common and you don't come across as a professional photographer. And there's always the option to pretend that you're just messing around with your phone or even maybe taking a selfie, but actually you're using the main camera. I've done this a couple of times and it worked even better than expected. Another aspect that speaks for using a phone for street photography, especially when you're primarily shooting film, is the fact that it allows you to try new things that you otherwise wouldn't. This little project I did in Barcelona. I only brought film cameras and on a rather gloomy day I had no intention to use them. So I started this small series using my phone. It was all about the colors and I specifically shot it to post the images over on Instagram as stories. Another little project that I shot just for fun in Korea three years ago it was a crazy idea, but back then I had this app and when you took a selfie, you could apply some silly filters. I'm not a selfie person, but I thought it would be funny to use this on random people. The issue was that you had to get really close around one meter and it took a little for the app to scan the faces and apply the filters. I figured that the perfect environment for that might be the subway and I gave it a try. Taking the photos wasn't easy because it was almost impossible not to laugh. I had no intentions to use the results for anything, but I had so much fun taking those shots and I think we should not forget that having fun and enjoying the process is a very important aspect of photography. 
Now, before I show you how I process my smartphone images, a quick reminder that you have less than 24 hours left to pre-order my brand new Xpenzine and save up 50% on shipping. And some of you messaged me asking about shipping costs for my other Zine 28, this one here, and that will also be available with reduced shipping costs until tomorrow. And when you order both, you can even save up a little bit more. If you're interested, the link will be in the description box down below. All right, here's my phone and here is how I process my images. The app that I'm using is called Snapseed and is available for free for iOS and Android. So this photo here I took at the airport and with my phone and I want to convert this to black and white. So I press on tools, then on black and white, even though it's the menu here is not in English, but I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to figure it out. So I'll press on black and white and here I can pick different uh, presets and you can change some settings as well. Let me just reduce the contrast maybe a little bit. Okay, that's all right. Now let's correct the horizon because it's a little bit crooked. It did it automatically and that looks just all right. So yeah, I'm going, I'm going to take this. Now let's crop in a little bit just to get rid of the things here on the right side. Okay, just about here, that looks all right. Now, I think uh, maybe we can add a little bit of grain that might look at to the image. And here you can, um, this will apply an effect uh, on top of the grain. So we'll get rid of the, uh, the color effect. Now let's add a curve just to bring the blacks in a little bit more. I think about here is all right. And then let's bring up the highlights. And now maybe let's bring out the shadows a little bit more. Maybe I think this should be all right. Okay. Okay guys, that's it. I think this looks all right. And I'm going to save this and let's hop to the next image. Now here's another image that I took in uh, in Saigon in Vietnam and let's apply a filter. These filters are kind of like film simulations I would say and you can see they look very different. And which one will I pick? I think this one. Yeah, this one looks good. Okay, let's start with this one. Now what I will do next is um, I will get rid of the blue on the right side corner because it's a little bit distracting and maybe the red of the tail light of the car. So let's get rid of that. So I will use the brush tool. Maybe minus 10 saturation and I will just brush with my finger over the tail light and the blue and then it's gone. All right. Next thing, I think overall, um, the what you can see in the mirror, it's a little bit too dark, so I want to brighten this up. And there are several ways to do this, and how I'm going to do this is very easy. I'm going to brighten up um, the image overall. I like this, now it seems okay. Now, and I will apply a vignette and just about here. And now I can uh, lower the overall brightness around this and yeah, around about here. That looks all right. Yeah, I think that's okay. Maybe here. All right, now I think it's, this looks all right and now you can see the before and after so it's pretty it's a pretty big difference and it was only a few clicks so now I can share the image no problem all right guys that's it for today's video don't forget to pre-order my new expansion until tomorrow and I hope to see you all again very soon in the next one until then auf Wiedersehen